everybody. Welcome back to Recordology. Okay, take a look at what you're looking at right now. <laughs> yes, this is the Electra home. I think this is called the Kensington or something like that. But I replaced the $800 LP7 with the Electra home. No, I didn't get rid of it. It's just in storage right now. I brought this one out of storage for a couple of reasons. One, I like all-in-ones. I like wooden all-in-ones. I think that's there's nothing wrong with that. Plus, I'm going to pan to the right here a little bit. It gives me a good a good way to listen to my 8-track player because I can plug it into the aux input. As I was out of inputs over here, as you can see, I've got the uh, component stack and I was just out of input. So rather than have to jostle cables, I wanted to plug into this. But today what I really wanted to do is address a question that comes up a lot of the time. Now this will apply to suitcase players, to all-in-ones, basically anything with a Chuo Denshi type red tip ceramic stylus unit. This one ironically has a <laughs> is the same basic type but it has a, a gray tip but this is a ceramic cartridge. This one happens to be impedance matched. A lot of the suitcase players people say there's no bass it sounds bad. That's because the cartridge hasn't been properly impedance batch, matched and when that's done appropri appropriately and properly the sound is actually very warm and rich. This unit right here is impedance match. So that ceramic cartridge sounds fantastic. So in fact, I'm gonna play you just a little sample here so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Listen to the, how warm and rich it is. Now, obviously that's uh, big band music. So you're gonna be like, oh, that's, that's not a good example. You should use uh, some rock or whatever. You get the same effect. It's got good bass. Actually, I've got the bass potted down a little bit right now. This is bass at negative one, treble at plus one, because this thing, in fact, you know what? Heck it, I'm just gonna show you what it sounds like playing an eight track, because this is a great example. It's an Elvis eight track, and it's stiff. Let's go ahead and switch our source over to aux. Listen to how warm this is. A lot of bass, very warm, very rich. Can't play much Elvis. So it sounds great. But sometimes, like I said, some all-in-ones aren't as fortunately designed as this, and they're not impedance matched. So you get kind of a tinny sound. It still works fine. It's not damaging anything, but it sounds kind of weak. So a lot of people say, well, can I just connect this to speakers? Will it fix that issue? No, it will not necessarily. And that's because these units don't necessarily output a higher quality signal just because you're putting them into good speakers. So I'm going to play a little bit more of this record just for a point of reference, and then we're going to hook up some external speakers and you can see what I mean. So let me, oops, I just shut it off. Let me go back over to the phono input as soon as I turn this on. This unit's pretty dang good condition. If you remember when we reviewed it earlier this year and we actually did a teardown on it, I need to adjust the 33 RPM speed. It's running a bit fast, and unfortunately, I can't figure out how to get to the pots on the board. It's in a very weird place. That's a separate saga. Okay, so going back to phonograph, hopefully here, come on. It also has a little bit of a hum to it, but eh, whatever, I, I honestly don't care. For my purposes, it serves me well. So let's listen just a little bit here. Listen to the sound quality. Listen to the fidelity. Okay, now I'm gonna go over here and we're going to turn on these speakers and you're gonna hear some more of it through the speakers. And you say to yourself, well, it's gonna sound even better through a set of speakers, right? You'd be wrong. You would be wrong. So let's go ahead and listen and you'll see what I mean. Turn the volume off here. So we had bigger speakers hooked up, but it doesn't sound necessarily better. So there you go, kind of interesting. So a lot of people are like, well, I'll just hook up my suitcase player, my all-in-one to set of speakers that'll fix any issues. It's just not the case. It's not the way it works. Um, you know, sometimes you can get a little bit fuller sound. Same thing goes with the headphone jack. You put in a set of good headphones, you're like, all right, this is gonna sound great. Well, guess what? It may not necessarily sound great. The speakers on the unit can sometimes be your best bet. And in this case, with them being properly impedance matched, they really are your best bet. Now the internal speakers. As you can tell, it's a lot better with the built-in speakers. 
And again, really the issue comes down to impedance matching. So there's certain things you need to look for. Just kind of like when you're buying a new camera, you may think, oh, megapixels, megapixels, megapixels. Well, sometimes higher megapixel cameras don't necessarily equal the best image. You gotta consider other things like optics, signal processing, lenses. Well, I guess that's optics, but you know what I mean. There's other factors. The same thing goes with record players. So just connecting to bigger speakers doesn't necessarily equal better sound. You gotta look inside sometimes. In this case, the internal speakers, although, you know, much simpler and smaller than these external ones, they do better because they're impedance matched. So I've, I've said that phrase over and over. I apologize for it. But anyway, another look at the Electro Home here. It's a gorgeous unit. It's a really bright reddish cherry wood finish. And it's absolutely a gorgeous piece of furniture. And I love this thing. It's, it's a great all-in-one unit. I still have a, an affinity for all-in-one units. I think they serve a vital piece of the puzzle of what we're doing here. Now let's take a look over here at my LP3. And a lot of people always ask me, well, what's better? Should I go for an LP, what, should I go for an LP120 or an LP60 or the new X series? And I always say, well, it's kind of like apples to oranges because the LP60 is automatic and an LP120 is fully manual. I personally like the fully automatic experience. I like push button, blah, 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 blah. But this is a good compromise because it gives you the best of both worlds. You get all at once the automatic convenience of the LP60, but you get the ability to change cartridges, upgrade cartridges, something you can't do on the LP120. And you can adjust the counterbalance, anti-skate. So it's got a lot of the manual you know, adjustments that you may want on a higher end record player with still that automatic functionality. Another thing too is that people don't understand that when you have an automatic turntable, you can still use it fully manual. I mean, I can, you know, people use the terminology skip to a track or skip songs, and I can do that. You can queue up any track manually. You can raise and lower the stylus anywhere you want on the record. It's just a fantastic unit. And I didn't think I'd like a white one. I just thought, you know, I like the kind of the black look better. But this looks slick. And then when I thought to put the white acrylic platter mat on top, I was like, we have a winner here. I mean, I had that like neon green one. It's got like a steel or aluminum. I think it's aluminum platter. It is belt driven. But, you know, I like, you know what? Oh, look at that. That just looks slick. That looks absolutely slick. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at with things in here right now. This may not be the end state forever, but... I thought you guys might want an explanation as to why I've got this bad boy in here. <laughs> a suitcase or an all-in-one unit. Like I said, I like all-in-one units. This one doesn't do cassette, but that's okay. I've got a Pioneer cassette deck over here to the left. But it does pretty much everything else I need it to. It's a, it's a great unit. And like I said, this one sounds great out of the box. And having the line input so I can have my 8-tracks going, that's a win-win. By the way, that's a great 8-track deck. I went back and reinforced that head clip. So hopefully it'll last a long time. The only downside is it's the motor's kind of loud. It's not like a lubrication thing. It's just kind of a loud motor. But anyway. All right, guys. That's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of the day. Check us out on Vlogmas tonight. We're doing something really cool. You're not going to want to miss it. Plus, keep watching those Vlogmas shows so you can win a free record player if you're here in the U.S. But that's going to do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.